So next what we're going to do is we're going to try and trim up the ears just a little bit just to get rid of a bit of this fluff going on in front here. So what we're going to do is again we're going to keep the blade on a short, on a long setting. And first we're going to see how Chase is with just the vibration of the thing and then I can see he's fine. You want to make sure your horse is pretty like chilled out with this kind of stuff before you attempt it. And then we're just going to start to, good boy, run down and start to get rid of a bit of that hair that is just getting in the way. <laughs> Here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the bridle path. Now, I'm gonna cut a little bit of a bigger bridle path than what Chase has at the moment. Um, I do keep a lot of it for his forelock because he doesn't have a lot of forelock. So, what I like to do is I separate it, and whatever I want to cut, I'll put in front of the. Yeah, I'll cut that bit off. So, everything that I want to cut, let me turn this off before I cut something. Everything I want to cut, I put in front of the halter, so it holds it down. And then I know exactly what I need to cut. So I'm going to be cutting everything that's short. Come. So this is all going to stay as forelock. There's a long bit in here that maybe you can keep as forelock as well. If it stands up, it shouldn't really be there. Okay, so... All of this is just gonna go. There's a few bits that are stuck in there. So now that it's divided, we're gonna go into it. We're slowly gonna cut, but slowly because we want to see what we're doing. I don't know if it's just me, but every time I watch this while I'm editing or I watch it again, I'm always holding my breath. So please let me know if you guys are holding your breath too as you see this. Okay, back to the video. Take it from the other side a little bit, just so I know exactly where I've got to stop and where I can keep going. And then we can clean that up a little bit. Good. So I've kept the forelock a little bit, you know how I have it a little bit far back. And then now we've got a nice place for our bridles and the halter to sit. Just like that. Good boy! That's better, huh? So, we're about to cut the tail. Uh, before you cut the tail, you want to make sure you give it all a good brush because then you know every hair has been kind of pulled down to the bottom and that's important. Now I've already sprayed some stuff in there from yesterday. Uh, I'll show you what stuff I use uh, later, but it's really good because it's, um, it stays in the tail so the next day it's still very easy to brush. Now, how I like to cut the tail is I like to make them as square as possible. Uh, and the way you get it as square as possible is you have to cut the tail at the angle the horse holds it. So every horse, not gonna say every horse, but not many horses go around with their tail stuck behind them. All the horses kind of lift it up a little bit. Um, so you just have to think about how high your horse lifts their tail. Now I know Chase roughly holds it kind of like at this height when we ride. So I need to make sure that when I cut it, the tail is being kind of held at this position. Now if you're alone, I'm often alone when I do these kind of things. So let me make sure Chase is also standing square with the hind. Good boy. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. No. Yeah. Good boy. Ah. Good boy. Yeah. Didn't know that was so difficult. Okay, sure, that's enough. Now, I'm often alone when I do this, so a little trick is to just grab a brush, and when the dandy brush or the brush head is facing down, you will put it up the top of the tail and the, the brush hairs will actually stop the tail from falling out of it. Good, this is roughly the height he holds it at. So I'm gonna go ahead, decide where I wanna cut. I wanna cut kind of a lot off today. I would say this much. And then I'm actually gonna do it with the clippers because this is the easiest way to get a straight cut without pulling the hairs, without having blunt scissors, this is the easiest way to do it. And then from the other side too. 
and then you get rid of any little bits. Now this is the first rough cut. So then you let the tail go, still keeping that thing in, and you go back down again and you check and you're like, well, that's way off. So then you cut into it again. Just making sure that you want a straight cut. So this side needs to come in a little bit. We're gonna let that go, we're gonna do it again, and it's slowly gonna get straighter and straighter every time. We're gonna do that again. Yep, it's getting pretty straight. Okay, and so that is our tail cut now. So, I've now cut the tail kind of at like fetlock height, but as soon as he holds it up to where he's gonna be when he's riding, you can see it's gonna be uh, shorter again. So I think for now, we're happy with this length. Of course, tomorrow, I can always cut more off, but I think for now, I'm gonna keep it, keep it at this length. And then as you can see, we did kind of cut off kind of a lot. <sighs> what we're gonna do next is we're gonna get rid of these little hairs that he's got going around, um, his little fetlocks. But one little trick is if you don't have the clippers, or if your horse is maybe bad with clippers, what you can do is you get a comb and you run it against the direction of the hair and anything that comes on top of the comb, you, you can just cut all of this. And so this, make sure, so this makes sure you cut everything at the same length. So say you go here, then you cut everything off. Now, it gets very annoying because things like that happen. Now, I'm keeping this kind of facing with the blade towards the hair um, so I don't cut too much off too quickly. One day is a blessing, the next is a curse But that's how it is, that's how love's supposed to feel Like God and the devil have struck a Just also cleaning up the coronet band of the hoof with all the little hairs that are hanging over it, and this is just gonna make it look a lot neater in the back as well. And then you can kind of go in and just thin it out a little bit in the front as well. And it's gonna make the foot look a lot more presentable like that. So that's a before, I mean that's an after, and this is a before here. So you can definitely see that it makes a big difference. The final thing we're gonna be doing with the clip is, and a lot of people don't actually know what the rule is for this, a lot of people don't know, do I leave, should I leave the hair on the weather? Um, where do I stop it if I want to cut it? And the thing is, obviously you can do whatever you want. But usually, in hacking, or in showing, uh, what you do is, is that the, where the neck starts, is where the mane should also start for the horse. So if you have any hair uh, on the wither and stuff, you should get rid of it for a show. Um, but you don't have to, obviously, this is all preference. Uh, but I like to make it start where the neck is because I think that kind of defines the neck as well. So, same thing, just cleaning this face up a little bit here. And you want to be careful because it can touch the skin kind of like easily here. So you don't want to cut off too much that it goes right down to the skin. And I'm just cutting now towards the head but I'm angling the blade up a little bit so then I don't actually cut down into it all level. And that, you can go a bit sideways and then a bit this way. And that's kind of it. Good boy. Okay, now that we've cut everything we need to cut, mane, tail, uh, all his feet and everything is nicely trimmed up and his face as well, we are gonna go ahead and give him a nice... <laughs>